<laughs> hey guys, welcome back. This is Cody, and this is Asher, and this is Jesse on the camera, and that's Olive pushing Jesse around. And uh, this is Toops time. Uh, today we're going to be outlining our milking routine. Everything from putting this girl over here up to milking this one in the morning. So stay tuned and check it out. Alright guys, you're going to have to forgive me for having to do a voiceover for this video, but it was a whole lot easier doing it this way than me having a mic the whole time I'm doing all this work. So right here you see we're actually heading out the evening prior to today, and we are going to round up Maple and put her in her pen for the night. Girls, ready to eat? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Asher, sure what you gonna do while they eat? What are you gonna do? You gonna draw? Yeah. Go draw by the rocks. Go sit by the rocks. Alright, so while Asher's playing, uh, you'll notice that I am getting some feed for the girls. The first one that gets fed is always Autumn. Um, I feed Autumn and these other uh, four girls gather up here and uh, eat what I bring to them. Um, Autumn usually gets a total of three or four scoops of feed um, in the evening. The other girls, they only get fed in the evening as training purposes to let them know that that's what this barn area is for. So they don't get quite as much food as Autumn does. This also, as you'll see here in a minute, distracts the other girls so that they don't get in the way whenever I'm trying to round up maple. She obviously knew she was on camera because she never goes in her stall this easily. <laughs> uh, she is getting better, but uh, she doesn't normally go in quite this easy, but she did good for us today. So right here, I'm giving Maple a five gallon bucket or what's left of it. It's typically like three and a half to four gallons of water uh, to last her through the night. This water just comes from our hose up by the house. And then in addition to that, you'll see here in a minute, I'll be giving her one scoop of the uh, three quarter inch uh, cube feed. And then she has the mineral block in there, which she likes a lot. As you can see, it's licked up pretty good. And uh, also I'll be bringing her in a handful of hay for her to eat on through the night and also some hay for her to um, have to keep her dry and clean through the night. So you'll notice these uh, two smaller girls here, Hazel and Olive, they're actually waiting because they see me going back into the feed pen because uh, that big girl over there is a, more of a pig than she is a cow and she just kind of pushes them out of the way whenever she's ready to eat. <laughs> Asher, can you pet Hazel? Come see Hazel. As you can see, Asher has a pretty darn good time <laughs> while we're doing this as well, so he makes things easy on us. Yeah, here's what I was talking about earlier. I'm going into this pen right now. I'm just going to spread some hay out um, on the ground. It's been really dry uh, 
weather for the past few weeks, so she hasn't really needed this, but for the purposes of the videos, uh, you can either spread hay out or you can spread uh, straw out, whatever you have that's on hand and convenient. I clean these stalls out quite regularly, so the hay works just fine for us since it stays on hand pretty much all the time. And then probably more so than the feed, she likes to eat on some of the really nice hay throughout the night. That hay is always gone in the morning, so always make sure to give her a big handful of that. So my wife is actually spending some time with Hazel here about two or three minutes before I got this footage and Hazel looked like she had enough. <laughs> and here we are, headed in for the night. Alright, now comes the milking routine. We always start with some prep work. Uh, you see in the video I'm just holding up the labels that I have on top of my five gallon bucket lids. Uh, for each thing that I use to clean the machines and to clean autumn. That first one was just uh, water is all it is. I usually fill up like a quarter of a five gallon bucket of water and then this next one here is uh, the soap and water that I use. And this is to clean autumn's udder before actually milking her. Uh, and there's all sorts of different chemicals uh, professional milking chemicals that you can uh, buy for everything you're seeing me use. Um, I tend to use uh, household products that I already have on hand. Uh, a, it's cheaper. Uh, B, it's more convenient. And C, it just works well for us. Um, haven't had any issues with uh, bacteria or anyone getting sick from drinking our milk, so it must work pretty well. This last one is a five gallon bucket full of uh, soap, water, and bleach. This is what works really well for us. Again, there are all sorts of different dairy brand chemicals that you can use if you want to spend the money on them. This works really well for us, so this is what we like to use. There are exact ratios that you can look up online um, for the different amounts of bleach to water to uh, soap that you actually need whenever mixing. I just, uh, after doing it for a while, just started doing it by eye and it works just as well for us. <laughs> Most important chemical of the morning, coffee. <laughs> Don't want to forget your coffee. Alright, so we actually use a machine for milking, and that's what this container here is for. I always take this inside with me and uh, rinse it out really good and uh, wipe it out with some soap and water before uh, bringing it back out to the milking barn to use for the day. If you are milking by hand, you'll just have a <laughs> just have a small bucket in the place of this. You 
You want to try to drain your bucket out real well before milking so that you don't have any water that can mix with and contaminate your milk. Alright, now that everything's done, I'm going to be loading everything up into the back of the truck and heading out to the milking barn. So there's that other container I was telling you about. You may be wondering why we have two separate containers for the milk. This one's actually about four gallons, and the whole point of this one is being we do not milk in the same area that we filter and process the milk. Um, I need to be able to clean my machine after milking, so as soon as I'm done milking, I transfer the milk from the big container into that smaller container. And um, what that then allows me to do is use that big container to clean out my machine. This is the route that we take every single day to get down to the barn. Our barn is a couple hundred yards from our home and from the area that we actually milk in, which is also our wedding venue. The reason for this is our spring-fed pond is down there to the left of the screen. And uh, I wanted them to be able to have access to fresh water at all times save myself the work of having to haul water back and forth so we built the barn down there and we don't mind the drive all right here we are at the gate that allows us to get into the area where the milking barn is as you can see our girls are held into their different paddocks just by a single strand of electric wire. So there is another video talking a little more about that. Um, but uh, this is a good way to save some money and it works great. <laughs> There they are, just like they are every day, waiting on me. And there's Maple, safe and sound, in her own pen. Notice the generator right here to the left. That's what we use to power this barn. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing, Missy? That's a pretty girl. Alright, this bucket right here, I have permethrin. Off to the left for fly spray. Off to the right, I have a 1% iodine solution that we use to dip her teats in before milking. And then you have rags in that black garbage bag there. And then some bag balm, which is really good if she ever starts to get any cracks or sores on her uh, nipples or on her bag um, it works really well to uh, help with those so you will definitely want a gate leading into your milking area because the cows are very nosy. All right, so right here I have my milking machine. Back in the corner I have buckets of feed. Um, this is the 10 gallon bucket. I'm gonna put this on the machine first and go ahead and get it hooked up. Everything you do, you wanna keep in mind uh, contamination. So you don't just wanna leave that bucket sitting there with those open holes at the top for flies to possibly get in or something so or maybe it's just me being paranoid but I always hook it up first thing whenever I get out there
Now to organize these buckets, the bleach um, and soap water, like I said, is for cleaning the machine. The water is to do a quick rinse right after I use the bleach through the machine. And then we have our soap and water for the rags that I'll use to clean on them off. Go ahead and toss a rag into this bucket here and get it soaking. Try to prepare everything I can before getting her into the stanchion. So these Ziploc bags is what I use. I slide them over the teak cups to protect them, keep bugs out of them, and then just use these uh, Velcro straps to hold it on in case we get any wind. Again, this may be a little excessive, I don't know. Uh, it's just something I like to do. I always worry about wasp or something getting in there and making a nest, so just peace of mind for me. All right, here I am. I'm about to start filling up Autumn's food trough. I usually give Autumn um, right around 16 pounds of feed, sometimes closer to 20 in the morning during her milking. Aside from milking and aside from putting them up in the afternoon, these cows are all grass and pasture fed, so this is just kind of a, a snack and motivation to get them over to this area and it works very well. This area, or that uh, pan at the bottom is actually a catch pan. You'll see it does get used. Uh, used to have a lot of issues with flies getting into Autumn's food that would fall out of her mouth in front of her stanchion. It was just causing a lot of flies to be in the barn. So I started putting that catch pan down there and then once she's pretty much done eating, I'll pour every bit of the contents of that food back into her trough and then let her finish eating on that too. This cage here is something you might want to consider if your generator is exposed. I just welded this thing up. It works really well. The cows love to come over here for some reason. And I'm telling you, it happened all the time. They love to come over here and pull on that wire. Um, and, and pull my cord out of the generator which means I'm in the middle of milking and now I have no pressure, no fans. Um, I just pulled my power plug and got so annoying that I just built a cage around it. Alright, so time to get Autumn in here. If you'll notice I have these fans going. That one there is just pointed at the machine just to help keep it cool on a hot day. But the other two fans uh, have a very high airflow, and that's for flies. Uh, if she comes in with a bunch of flies, they cannot fly around in this area. There's so much airflow going on, so that's a really good way to uh, keep from having to use so much fly spray and uh, things like that on your cows. Um, you just keep the flies away from your milking area with fans, So, and they're all ran off that generator. This is me locking her head gate in. Um, I don't always have to do this with Autumn. She's a very calm cow. Um, but it is there for uh, whenever you have to train cows in the future. Uh, and some cows just may not like being in the stanchion. So This is me cleaning our teats off with the soap water before milking. You want to clean every bit of uh, mud who, uh, whatever may be on her at the time. Some days is easier than others depending on where she's been laying. But I usually will uh, wipe her down real good one time and then dip and wipe again, sometimes using multiple rags if she's really bad. And then I'll put this iodine solution on her. I like to cover her entire teat and even onto her bag some with the iodine solution because I'm using a milking machine and this thing sucks up onto the bottom of her bag. So before I dry her I go ahead and turn my machine on, take these bags off and just let it start building up pressure. It doesn't take but a, a few seconds but I just like to let it run and warm up before I use it. See it building pressure right there. 
So now I'm gonna grab a bag out of this bucket and go ahead and start drying her off. You want to make sure that her bag is really, really dry. The first thing I do before I completely dry her is strip a few uh, pumps of milk out of each teat. This just ensures that any trash or um, any trash that may be um, right there at the base of her teat gets blown out of there and also you, you want to check where the milk lands and make sure that you don't see any signs of infection or mastitis. So you want to wipe her off real good because if, if you start uh, using these suction cups on her and she's got a bunch of water you're going to start getting a uh, what can be described as a barney flavor to your milk. <laughs> It'll just taste like a, a wet cow a little bit. Just a slight flavor, but it's, it's enough to make it unpleasant, so dry her off real good. I always put, uh, this is just me, I put two of them on before I actually activate the suction to the claw. It just makes it to where the machine doesn't lose so much pressure. One of the joys of using a machine is once you hook her up, especially if you don't have a real kicky cow, uh, once you hook her up, then you can start tending to your other cows and just let the machine do its work. And this thing milks all four teats at one time. This machine can actually milk two cows at a time, but I just don't have the space for that, so I just... Uh, plugged off all those other ports. Look at all that milk. Alright, these other girls get basically a half and half scoop of this stuff each um, in the morning feed. Again, they're, they're on grass all day. We have plenty of land for them to eat grass. Um, and I have hay out at all times as, um, also, so this is just a treat for them. And boy, do they love it. <laughs> You'll notice every time I enter and exit this area, I've just made it a habit to close this gate behind me. Um, if your cows are as nosy as mine are, um, they will just follow you right on in there, and then you gotta. 500 to a thousand pound animal that you have to try to get out of that little area so just make it a habit it'll help you out in the long run now time to go let maple out of her pen she looks quite comfortable but I'm gonna let her out anyway <laughs> What she usually does is um, heads over to where the other two girls are eating and just kind of eats on that pile with them until mama gets done milking. And see, she stays nice and clean. She's got plenty of room in there. These pens are eight foot wide by 12 foot deep. We were actually putting the cow, the, the mama cow in the pen at night, and that just doesn't work out very well. We were doing it because Maple is hard to get a hold of because she's still really skittish, but uh, Autumn would, would come out of that pen every day just, you know, covered in poop because, I mean, she poops, and when she does, she poops a lot, and then she ends up having to lay in it. So we did that for a few days before we were like, okay, let's just start rounding this calf up and trying to get this calf into the pen. Took some work to figure out how to do it, being we don't actually have corrals, uh, but we figured out uh, a pretty good method that works for us, and that's how we do it every night. Right here, I'm just ensuring that I've uh, mostly drained her uh, being I still have a calf on her I don't actually worry about completely draining her because I'm, I'm 
I'm sure Maple wants something to drink in the morning. So I always leave a little bit for her. But if you don't have a calf on her, then you're definitely going to want to make sure you completely drain her every milking. Something else you want to do if you're using a machine, um, I always try to um, let as much of the milk get out of the tubes before I start cleaning as possible. Um, but if you're going to stick this claw with all these teats into this bleach bucket with it still hooked up to your container with your milk in it you want to make sure that there's no suction on that I've done that one time and accidentally sucked a bunch of bleach water into my milk and just had to throw it all out so don't do that so you want to go ahead and cover her teats in this iodine solution and what that does is ensures that she doesn't get any infection into her teats while they're still open from the milking. And now I'm going to go take this bucket and transfer it into the smaller bucket so that I can bring it back to the machine and start cleaning. Again, if I did not have this smaller bucket, I would have to bring this big bucket all the way back to the barn, filter the milk, and then come all the way back out here to clean my machine. So now you can actually see what I was talking about um, and why we need this other bucket. All right, right here you'll see me dipping these, this claw with the um, suction cups into the bleach water. You'll see me dipping it, taking out, dipping it, taking out. What that does is it lets a little bit of air get in, into the hoses and then causes this really strong suction of uh, not only the liquid to come through, but it bubbles up. So it basically um, has like a, a really hard hitting function where it, causes the water to hit really hard against the tubing and against the claw and just does a better job of cleaning rather than just having it sucking the water straight. So after I use about three quarters of that bucket I'll come over here and uh, dip the claw in the water just a couple times just to get the bulk of that bleach um, and soap out of these tubes and then I hang it back up. And again, you want to keep things as clean as possible, so I hang this up um, and immediately start replacing those Ziploc bags to make sure I don't get any bugs or whatnot in the tubing. Sorry if some of this footage isn't all that great. I was doing all this by myself, so <laughs> bear with us. You'll notice behind me uh, Hazel and then occasionally Olive will be sticking her head through the gate to see what's going on. So, <laughs> uh, Like I said, they're really nosy cows. And I'm sure they also want me to give them more of those treats. So these caps that actually go on the ends of the tubes, 
I put those on there to again keep any bugs from flying in um, until my next milking and I always I don't know if you notice I kind of dip them in that bleach water as well just an extra precaution that I take time to pack everything up I always grab some extra um, cubes and feed them to uh, to hazel and olive and this is uh, again it's just training I mean hazel a month ago I couldn't get her to come anywhere near me and now I get to love all over so I just end up made this a routine as um, part of my morning milking to feed these girls some snacks by hand and just let them get used to me <laughs> and as soon as they're done eating they always head over to the pond for a drink and I am heading back to the barn to go ahead and filter all this milk Here we are at the kitchen. First thing I do is wash my hands after dealing with the cows and possibly getting them contaminated, obviously. So wash my hands with some soap and water. And then I start labeling our jars. What we use is a permanent marker. Um, actually comes off the jars quite easily, but stays on as long as we need it to. So whenever it's time to clean it, it just wipes white off. And we actually use the dishwasher for cleaning. Uh, and the dish dishwasher does a great job of getting the permanent marker off so we don't usually have to touch it. This here is our filtering funnel. Um, it works absolutely wonderful. Um, you got the, the filters, the milk filters that actually go in it and then that little snap ring just pushes down and holds the milk filter in. And you you want a pretty big funnel like this especially if you're pouring from a decent sized container um, because you can make you a pretty good mess. You will see some splashing here. Oddly enough, I, I normally don't splash hardly at all, <laughs> but uh, I was doing everything with the opposite handedness so that I can get this footage. Um, but yeah, even with this big funnel, you can still splash a little bit. If you'll notice, as I'm as I'm switching containers, I don't leave any containers open to air very long without having a lid on it. So before I actually switch and start um, pouring milk into another container, that lid goes back on the container I've already filled up. And then what we do is actually put it straight into the freezer for usually an hour, sometimes two, depending um, on what we're doing that day. Um, and what this does is gets the uh, milk down to temperature a whole lot faster than sticking it straight into the refrigerator. The last part of the process is the fun part, just cleaning up. But after you do this, you're pretty much done for the day other than 
coming back in an hour or so and transferring that milk from the freezer to the fridge. That's it guys, that's our milking routine. Uh, sorry that we're having to do voiceovers for everything, but um, my wife's got the toddler in the morning, so I don't really have any help. And uh, I just figured I could set up a camera and record what I'm doing and uh, voice over it for you guys later rather than having to do everything with a mic attached to me too. So anyway, I hope this was helpful and uh, enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and um, stay tuned for more future videos. God bless.